Okay, so today we'll be looking at the proof of the Marvers theorem. So the question will be asked and stated like this. Prove the Marvers theorem. It might also say using proof by induction, but the guts of it will be just to say prove the Marvers theorem and written like that. Okay, so we use proof by induction here, so it's really important to remember the three steps to proof by induction. So the first step would be to write down prove true for smallest allowable n. I always say prove true for smallest allowable n. Some people will just say prove true for n is equal to 1. The reason I say smallest allowable n is because of a proof by induction you might come across an inequalities question. There might be a restriction and then n would not be allowed to be 1. So I always just say well whatever is the smallest allowable n. In this case it happens to be 1. So we're putting it to the power of 1. But anything to the power of 1 is itself. And we know left is equal to right here, so it's true for n is equal to 1. Step 2. And then really important again that you do actually write down that. Do write that down. Step 2. Assume true for n is equal to k. It's possibly one of the funniest steps in all of maths that we are assuming. It seems really weird, but look, it's what we do. So here, wherever there is an n, and it can be useful back at the start to put a bracket around any time you see an n in a different colour because you now know you're going to come back to that and write the whole thing out again but writing it out like that okay. so this is our assumption that we will then use later on in step 3 so step 3 is to actually perform the actual proof so step 3 is prove true for n is equal to k plus 1. You might want to write in using your assumption. But it's not the most important thing at the end there. But it is important to write down step 3, prove true for n is equal to k plus 1. So what do we want to actually prove? This is what we want. We want this to be to the power and this to be multiplied out here, and this to be multiplied out here. So that's how I know I'm right if I get to something like that at the end. So to begin with, we use the indice rule. So we start working on this left-hand side, and we use the indice rule. How can you split apart addition of powers like this? Well, on page 23, uh, 21 of the log tables, so on page 21 you'll find the following rules. So here we go, is the page from the log tables, page 21. And we end up using this rule up here in the corner. So the powers are being added, so we could split it apart and put each of them to a power. So I could write the bracket out again and leave it to the power of k. Write the bracket out again, leave it to the power of 1. So we get the likes of this. So it's the bracket written out once to the power of k. The bracket written out twice to the power of 1. So we can split that apart. But this might look familiar. This section right here is actually the left hand side of our assumption and thus can be replaced by that. So I'm going to fill this in lower down here. And I've kept the right hand side the same. So here, kept it all the same. If I have it to the power of 1, it's effectively just written by itself. Now I know order of multiplication does not matter. So what's or to the power of k by or? Well, the power here was 1. So I'm just going to add the powers. And then multiply this bracket by this bracket. So I've that written down there and that written down there. Now I have to be a little bit more careful, because I'm actually multiplying these out slowly. So what do we get? Cos k theta by cos theta is cos k theta cos theta. Cos k theta by i sine theta is i cos k theta sine theta. I sine k theta by cos theta is I sine k theta cos theta.
I sine k theta by I sine theta is I squared sine k theta sine theta. Next up, we start to group the like terms. So this I squared I know is going to change to minus 1 because I know I squared is defined as minus 1. So all of this will just change to a minus. I actually just shift its location out to the front here to group these two together and I'll explain why in a second. And out of here and here, I've just factorized out I. Now, we need to go to our log tables and I think it's page 14 that we're going to end up using. If I were to refer to this angle as A and B, A and B, I could end up using this and write this whole line as cos A plus B. Well, what's A? It's K theta and B is theta. And here, A, B, A, B. And here's this. So it would end up being written sine A plus B, which would be sine K theta. Um, sine k theta plus theta. One last little bit. Keep an eye on the goal that we wanted from step three. We can factorize theta out from this. And that's exactly what I was asked to prove at the start of step three. Remember the start of step three, which is here? Get to that point there. So I know I'm actually finished the proof. So once I've done the substitution out, factorized out theta, it's QED, and I do our final step. Therefore, it's true for n is equal to k plus 1. Assuming it's true for n is equal to k, true for n is equal to 1, true for all n is an element of the natural numbers. So not a very common exam question, but really worthwhile putting some time and effort into it. Make sure you focus on step one, step two, and step three. You'll get most of the marks for actually writing what those steps are out and writing out what you're supposed to do. And then there is a little bit of manipulation, I suppose, that is kind of difficult. Um, where would be the first major part of it? I definitely think identifying probably that the trigonometry and that you're going to use that is kind of difficult and possibly the first step as well using page 21 of the log tables is a little bit difficult as well. Hopefully you found the video helpful anyways.